what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel <clears throat> so we are continuing on the darts t56 swap today i'm still waiting on parts for the actual uh transmission over there i'm waiting on uh, my front plate to come in i believe it'll be in today what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the engine up so uh the last time this engine was painted was 2022 i think summer of no i don't know maybe 21 or 22, back whenever the 360 was built. Since it's been built, uh, it was in the car for a whole summer and uh, a couple semesters of college. Then it come back out, I cammed it. It it, uh, it was kind of dirty then, but I just said, whatever, I don't care. So I just put it back in there. And then over time, it's kind of gotten a little nastier and nastier. Uh, I do have like a before picture over here that I'll put of this side. So far, all I have done to this thing is I sprayed some of the best degreaser known to man, oven cleaner. Just go to Walmart, grab the, grab the cheapest, most toxic oven cleaner you can get your hands on. I sprayed it on there. I've made about three rounds with it. Spread it on there, get, use a little brush to agitate it and wipe it around. But so what I'm gonna do today, what I plan to do is get this thing cleaned up and i'm probably gonna have to do some scuffing on it i plan to get the engine in primer i need to clean up the front cover i'm gonna pull this front cover off because like i said i'm swapping to magnum serpentine belt system uh this time around rather than the old uh, la time and cover v belt the most difficult part or the one thing i'm gonna have to figure out is uh you know the, obviously the dart is carbureted and I've been running a mechanical fuel pump with the Hughes Engines uh, roller cam fuel pump snout extender deal. And with the Magnum timing cover, I don't have this provision here. So I'm going to have to run an electric fuel pump on, on the Dart. But, you know, it is what it is. I would much prefer the benefits of the really easy and accessible serpentine belt system rather than all the the really messed up V-belt system that I had on here before because I was I was eating alternator belts like it was nothing. So that is going to be a big benefit to the engine. Won't want to do that even if I do have to take my trusty mechanical pump off and put an electric on. I guess I just need to keep a spare in the car. I'm going to pull the oil pan gasket off, time and cover off. I'm going to get those sealed up, put back together, have the engine sitting sealed up. Uh, I'll go through maybe wire wheel the engine try to get some of this flaky paint off of it so let's get into it oh and i just know there's water getting all up in the uh fuel pump hole oh boy. armed with my handy dandy drill and wire brush set i've been just kind of just kind of giving her, giving her the beans, really. So, one thing I've noticed is that apparently the heads were a lot cleaner than the block whenever I painted it. Uh, I had this engine. This is actually the first engine I ever built. And uh, this engine, I had it vatted. I had the heads vatted, and I had the crank cleaned. And then I did the rest of the assembly. Uh, uh, myself and a buddy, Mr. Jesse York. But anyway, we... Uh, we had the block cleaned. We used some cast blast as like a primer. You may not believe it, but I have found, at least in my one time limited experience with the Valiant, that sealer primer, even though it's not high temp, sealer primer works really, really, really good on an engine uh, and keeping it clean. Like the Valiant, 7,000 plus miles on it, engine still looks brand new. No chips or nothing. So it must have worked really good. I sealer primered it. Painted it uh, turquoise and then I clear coated it. I was gonna, I'm gonna keep this engine orange. I always like the Hemi orange in that car because that's what it's always had. So that's what it's gonna keep. But uh, yeah, I guess the paint just adhered to the heads a little better than uh, than the block. The block's chipping off like nothing. The heads are staying pretty orange. So maybe I won't have to take it down too far, but I'm just gonna keep wire brushing away at it and uh, see if I can't get it cleaned up and maybe spray a can of primer or something on it all right what's going on we're back uh we didn't paint the engine last night because it was 
it's getting a little late. I, I wanted to really get, get it down pretty good and uh, it was starting to get late. And I said, I'm not, I've got enough time that I don't want to just stay up at the shop till one or two in the morning every day. So there's too much to power tour now. That's easy, right? Should be. I think I've got all my parts. Well, there's two weeks to a local car show and I'd like to try to make it to that local car show. If I do, great. If I don't, not a big deal. But I like to use that as motivation. So uh, I'm gonna be working on it just probably a little bit every day. So uh, as you can see, I've done a pretty good amount of wire brushing on the block and uh, it's come around pretty good. I've already pulled my front timing cover off because like I said, I'm swapping to the Magnum front timing cover. And so any of you guys that are running a Magnum engine and you want a mechanical fuel pump, you have to use this Hughes Engines kit right here. Uh, it's like a cam snout extension kit. So it has the fuel pump eccentric on it for the mechanical pump and the LA timing cover and whatnot. Obviously with the Magnum setup, I don't need that. And I have disregarded my cam bolt and washer. So I need to locate a cam bolt and washer before I put this back on. So I'm kind of paused. I don't want to paint the engine until it's a complete unit. And I don't want to put the oil pan on until I have the timing cover on. That way that's a lot easier to mess with. So. I'm kind of at a pause on the engine until I go get a bolt tomorrow. But pull the oil pan off and I, I got a little little water in there through the through the fuel pump hole whenever I was washing it. But uh, everything in here is in good shape. No metal, no sparklies. And I mean, if the engine, like I said, it's good to go. Even though we're at a standstill on the engine, I did get a bunch of my parts in. Like uh, I've got my, from Tick Performance, my GM, slave cylinder i've got finally got a front plate in front plate this is shims for the front plate here's an external regulator kit so the magnum alternator is regulated by the pcm and they don't make a one wire alternator for magnums you know who would have thought so there's this kit right here and essentially you don't need the kit but for the price you would spend on wire and piecing everything together, it just made sense to get the kit. So uh, you pretty much just use an old school, you just use an old school regulator. And uh, there's a company called Quick Start that makes these complete kits that comes with the regulator harness and they give you instructions on how to wire it up. They have videos on it, whatnot. Pretty easy. This is actually an adjustable regulator, uh, but yep. That's what you need to externally regulate a Magnum alternator if you're not gonna run a PCM like I'm not. So I got that in. Like I said, I got my front plate in. So that will be coming up once we get the engine off the stand and bolt the bell housing on it. Then we'll have to measure for our uh, slave cylinder shim depth. And I just got some of my gaskets and whatnot in. So we're doing pretty good on parts. I believe everything's here. But what I'm gonna try to do, my goal is I'm going to try to get this front plate on. i got to swap input shafts and hopefully get the input shafts backlash as good as I can. It's kind of a particular process, I guess you could say. So we're going to work on that. I'll update you as I go along. I, I'm not good enough at this stuff to do how to, so I'll just update you as I go along. So the first thing we're going to do this old T56 is we're gonna go ahead and swap the input shafts and hopefully put the front plate on. So to get the input shaft out of this thing, I just had to kind of pull the counter shaft over just a little bit and you push on the input shaft a little. Uh, here it is. Comes right out, easy peasy. Uh, there is a, a bearing race in there for that bearing that I need to press in and then I'll have to press on the main input shaft bearing. I got a new one of those. So I'm gonna go press the, the new bearing race in the LS input shaft right there. Then work on pressing the main shaft bearing on. Then we should be in good shape. All right, we're back in the future here. Since last you saw, I got a bolt for the camshaft. Uh, I've actually went ahead and sandblasted my timing cover, my Magnum timing cover. And I also modified, so, uh, some of you know, I'm sure the Magnum bracketry, it's like uh, you got an alternator and AC bracket. And here, 
I'm not running AC, obviously. So uh, I just cut the AC portion of the bracket off. It used to go over here. I cut it right off. And uh, there's just my alternator bracket, then the tensioner bolts right in there. I did have to modify my, my uh, dipstick tube. And now, since modifying the dipstick tube, my dipstick won't work. This, this one won't at least. It'll just, as far as you get. But luckily, I've dealt with that before uh, on the Valiance, because I used the same pickup tube, because you can't use uh, the mag, I guess you could, but uh, the oil pan kit that I come with, obviously is for a car. The 360 LA oil pan for a car, come with this pickup tube here and a dipstick, but all Magnum engines, they're truck pans with rear stumps, so it's you know not quite the same. What I did on the Valiant, which I'll do here again, is I picked up a Trailblazer dipstick. And the only reason I picked that up is because it's like one of those real floppy braided dipsticks that's got like a little, there's like a little weight at the end of it, of lead, I guess. Uh, I'll, I'll cut this off and just weld that on. A uh, couple of little, little spot welds on there. It, it's been working great for the Valiant. I'm sure it'll work fine for this too. So uh, what I'm gonna do, since I've got all my bolts figured out now, I've got my power steering figured out and all that. That's not what I'm using, it's just what's there for mock-up. Uh, I think I'm gonna try today to uh, make some progress on the engine. We've got the timing cover cleaned up as good as it's gonna be. I may hit everything with a wire brush one more time on the engine and hopefully get the timing cover put on, get the oil pan put on, that's, that's the goal. Timing cover sealed up, oil pan sealed up then next chance i get we'll spray some primer and some paint on it for now i'm just going to be putting things on so i know this video is like jumping all around it's like engine transmission engine transmission but it's a couple of days in between so right now i'm on the transmission and uh, i'll show you where i'm at so i am putting my new front plate on that i had machined to uh i sent it off to a guy on ebay i'll put his thing here uh, but anyway, I had it machined so it would fit the LS internal style slave cylinder. But anytime you're changing your front plate on a T56, you have to shim the counter and main shaft. So they say what you have to do, and look, I'm not a professional at this. I'm not good enough that I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step, because there's way more qualified people to do that than I am. But I'll tell you what I did do. Uh, so you want zero in play. No in play at all, or I think it's zero to four thousandths in play. And then uh, the way that you're supposed to check in play via like GM service manual is really difficult to do. It's not really practical for somebody that doesn't have their special tools. So what Trimic suggests is you you uh, you go off of drag input shaft drag. So what you do is uh, there's a main shaft race and a counter shaft race they go right there and uh in behind these races inside the race and behind it you have shims these little shims right there and right here that go in behind those races and what you do is you over shim it to where whenever you bolt it down and you only got to use four bolts in four corners you got to torque them to 30 foot pounds whenever you get it torqued if it locks if it locks the shaft down where you can't spin the shaft that's too much obviously so what you have to do is back off in two thousandths increments so that's what i've been doing so for example uh i started with the shims that were already in it that were already in my original front plate deal i just used that as a starting point for example the main shaft it was 48 thousandths and it was too much I dropped down two thousandths to forty-six thousandths in a combination of all this, forty-six thousandths, and it was close, but you could tell it was still tight. So I dropped down another two thousandths to a total of forty-four thousandths, and the main shaft was perfect. Now you start with the main shaft. You take all the shims out of the counter shaft, and you start with the main shaft. Once you get the main shaft where you want it, then you keep the shims in your main shaft and then you start working on your counter shaft. That's where I'm at right now. So I started with 38 thousandths. That was my original shim that was in there, but it was 
kind of tight, but it wasn't super tight. So I wanted to lock it down and go from there. So I had one shim right here that was 44 thousandths. So I start, I stuck it in there, started with 44, locked it down, 42 locked it, 40 locked it, but I could twist it just a little bit, but obviously it wasn't good. So now I'm gonna drop back down to my 38, try it, then I'm gonna go down to 36 and see how much more, how much better that is. If I remember 38, it had just a little resistance. So they say you, you want it to spin free. So I'm gonna try 38. Well, I'll probably just go right to 36 because I know that 38 is just a little too much. So I'm gonna find a combination of all of these here that equals 36 thousandths. Put these shims behind this race, put it in here, put it on there, torque them to 30 foot pounds and try it. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. And I would video as I'm doing this, but like all my camera equipment is either gone or dead. So it's somewhere at home. All I have is my phone. I don't have a tripod or anything. So we're, we're just, just bear with me, bear with me. All right, so the shimming process is done. So I actually went out, we had another T56 back there. I actually went out and spun around on it and it was much looser than what I assumed was loose here. So I ended up going from a total of uh, 44 thousandths all the way to 38 thousandths. And I was following along with Trimix video on it. And uh, I'm, I'm right there with them as far as their specs and their feel and whatnot, as well as uh, over here, we went from, uh, I thought 38 was good. Then we went down to 36, 34, 32. And I think I actually ended up on, I think it was 32, ended up on 32, I believe and uh it's it's okay it's doing fine so we're gonna send it like that uh worst case scenario we rebuild the t56 i guess uh so now i need to grab some silicone do a thin layer of silicone get that sealed up then we can bolt my bell housing to it well we've skipped forward one more day i've got the uh got the front plate on bolt to torque down got the, the bell housing on everything it's looking Okay, and the transmission area. Uh, next thing I need to shim would be the slave cylinder. And before I could do that, I have to bolt the bell housing to the engine. But before I could take the engine and stuff off of the stand, I figured I need to go ahead and get it painted up. So uh, real quick, I slapped on the timing cover in the oil pan and I cleaned it best I could, wire brushed it and used some chemicals to get it off, blew it off and whatnot. Uh, and uh, right now it's in primer. I've decided, at first I wasn't going to, I wasn't gonna pull the intake, but I've decided that I'm gonna paint all the brackets and everything aluminum colored, and I would really hate to have a dull looking intake with the brightly colored brackets. So I guess just went ahead and pulled the, pulled the intake off. Not a, not a big deal, just a little silicone, a couple gaskets, he'll be back good as new. I'll paint it up and We'll be in good shape. So far, we've got the engine and primer I'm using sealer primer, the same method I did on the Valiance engine, and it seemed to do really good. So I think I've got all the primer I want on there. I'm gonna let it bake on for just a little while, then I'm gonna start hitting it with the Hemi Orange. We'll see how it goes, I don't know. But to the, now it's Friday, and so I'm hoping by the end of the weekend potentially have the T56 and the 360 made it together, kind of hung up in the car. So we'll see. Would you look at that? They finally laid some Hemi orange on it. Got it clear coated. Couple coats of orange, couple coats of clear. That son of a gun looking good. That son of a gun looks good. So uh, I'm gonna let this dry off. I think it's two, maybe, I think two coats of clear or so. A uh, couple, a whole can worth of Hemi Orange. And I think it turned out really good.
So maybe, you know, it may not be perfect, but you know, we'll see. Maybe it'll, if it'll hold this color for a little while, we'll be in good shape. So next thing I'm gonna do, I gotta clean up the intake that's over there and I'm gonna paint it aluminum as well as my uh, brackets. I'm gonna try to get them cleaned up, painted aluminum and get them bolted on. And then since this is sealed up together, well, as soon as I get the intake back on it and it's sealed up together, then uh, we can pull that off, both bell housing to it and start measuring for the slave cylinder shimming. Once that's taken care of and pretty close, we could start cutting the floor up with the dart. I hope to be videoing a lot more of that when I'm actually working on the car itself because I'm, I plan on doing that, a lot of that this weekend. Uh, I've been skipping around a bunch uh, just working on a couple hours after work every day. Not not wanting to stay up here super late like I did building the car. It just wore me out. So trying to pace myself and it's kind of letting this video skip around a little bit. So we'll try to get back on back on track here soon uh, with the normal like different camera angles and showing you what I'm doing rather than giving you an update after the fact. So yep, that's where we're at. Hopefully, uh, I'll keep you updated. All right, moment of truth. How bad was the tape job? Let's see. Not too bad. Oh, well, you know, except for a couple little spots here and there. But... Bam, W, W. Too bad. Need to hang the water pump on it. Got the timing cover sealed up so I could put the water pump on it now. Progress. Good progress. Good progress. Well, got her untaped. Got the water pump stuck on it. I, I just like to clear coat these water pumps out of the out of the box. I like that aluminum look on them. And uh, the engine looks really good. It's cured up a little bit. Looks really good. Maybe it'll stay that way. Now I'm out here working on the intake. At first I wasn't going to paint or take the intake off at all because it was already sealed up and it was fine. But I knew if I, if I painted all the brackets like I planned to for the Magnum Serpentine deal, if I paint all those and I leave the intake looking dull, I'm going to regret it. So I went ahead, pulled the intake off and uh, we're making her look brand new. And uh, pro tip, flat aluminum, VHT flat aluminum looks really really good looks really good i'll probably put that's like one coat i'll probably put one more coat on there clear coat it and call it good all right so we've got the engine cleaned up painted and the intake slapped back on it it's sealed up uh, i still gotta polish up the valve covers here but the intake turned out pretty good. It's a little more like fake aluminum looking than I liked, but it is what it is. It'll dull down just a little bit. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the engine so far. I've just got the uh, motor mounts, balancer on, water pump, but it's all sealed up. So next thing that's gonna happen to this is uh, it's gonna come off. I'm gonna put the flywheel clutch, pressure plate assembly on it, both bell housing on it, and we're gonna start mock it up, but that, is all for this video. It kind of jumped around a lot. That's my fault. I was not very prepared. I don't plan these things at all. So the next thing you're gonna see probably is uh, I'm gonna start test fitting some stuff. I'm gonna try to get this engine stuck over in that car today. So appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.